Hi there, come on in. I'm Fred Trost along with Ed Groves and Bob Garner. The three of us were catfish fishing last week at night. How'd we do? Well, not real well. Well, we, we did. We had a good time catfish yeah, fishing. I'm glad and, you said that. And, huh? and we're going to lose some sleep tonight, but we're going to get some walleyes. Yeah, well, what we're talking about tonight, a week later, another night fishing trip. We were invited up here by Mark Martin. Mark from Muskegon, who told me on the phone about a month ago that the walleyes are biting real good. How yeah. big are they? Oh, the average is about four to five pounds with a seven, eight thrown in and a possible 10 to 12. <laughs> well, that drew us up here. Now, Mark Martin was a fellow who was at our sportsman's banquet uh, last January down at Romas of Livonia. Yeah. Go ahead, tell the folks what you caught. Uh, 29.6 muskie, Great Lakes muskie out of uh, Taquamanon River, up by Taquamanon Falls in the UP. Hey, that was a great fish. Hopefully, maybe we can get a master angler walleye on this trip. Fellow who owns this boat, this is a, a boat that I guess you and Bob are going to be in. Mm -hmm. Jeff, Jeff Pescovis. Okay, Jeff, and you're, you're you're not just a walleye fisherman, but you're a salmon fisherman, a duck hunter. Oh yeah, steelhead fisherman, uh, deer hunter. Hey, we have a big buildup for tonight, for big walleye. Okay. You're going to be able to pull through. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, he said, oh yeah, but we had our fingers crossed. How did we do? Stay tuned because it's Thursday night and we're going walleye fishing on Michigan Outdoors. <laughs> Well, here we are putting the boat in Muskegon Lake, uh, dressed quite warmly because the wind is pretty brisk out here, and I don't know quite how it's going to be as we're getting our boats launched. Over here, there's some fellas who are, well, I guess coming in from their fishing. Right now, it's about quarter to 12, just before midnight. You guys been out fishing? Yeah, we've been out for a couple hours. We've been out for a couple hours. How was it? <laughs> it's rough out there. It's rough out. You're going to have a rough night fishing tonight. Oh, bad news, bad news. I tell you. Oh, did you guys get any fish? Well, we got one rock bass that... Is... You're walleye fishing, I presume? Yeah, we were. Just... Well, what's the deal on this weather here? Would you have been out longer if it wasn't rough? Oh, yeah, we just nicely got started. It wasn't too bad, and then it just picked up and got way too rough for us. So we heard better nights coming than this, I guess. Well, what do you think, what do you think about it? I mean, we can't... Uh, we don't have the luxury of coming back every night with the cameras. We got to go tonight. Are we nuts? Oh, you're not nuts, but <laughs> you're going to have a rough time. Well, that was not a good omen. We just finished last week's night fishing for catfish, which started in the rain and ended with one very small channel cat. Now we're faced with an evening of high winds. A front had moved through the night before, dumped more rain on Muskegon Lake than a run-of-the-mill rainstorm, and in all likelihood, the fish would be disrupted. We were all a little bit apprehensive, to say the least. But I've always said, never cancel a hunting or fishing trip that you've planned because of a bad weather forecast. And here is why. Want to go to strawberry first? This isn't bad. I thought it was going to be really rough. As it turned out, Ralph and Jerry, who were coming in at midnight because of the wind, should have stayed out. The wind died, conditions were excellent, and we caught fish. Okay, now I got him free. Oh, I think this is going to be okay. going to be a walleye. Oh, great. Huh? Looks like one. <laughs> it sure does. It's fighting pretty hard. Yeah, it is. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's a walleye. Is it? Yeah. Not a bad one, all right. There you Say, go. Right, show Mark. Me to, show me how to fish. Hey, that's right. <laughs> Isn't that great? There it is. Hey, you cannot beat that for a walleye. That is a dandy. Look at that, huh? Hey! Ha ha! That's the first one. Hey, it's only 10 after 1. Okay, that's great. Get my picture. I won't be on Michigan Outdoors. <laughs> we're uh, coming over one of the hotter spots where it drops, comes onto a corner right here, and it drops off out into the deeper part, and the fish, they'll foul out of the deeper water to get to the shallow water. They'll follow the same particular path every night and every day to get to their feeding grounds in the shallow water. So now I assume up here, uh, the is, is, a feet, is a shallow area. Yeah, uh -huh, that's a shallow area up there. And they're just like deer. 
any kind of fish, they got their own runway, and that's the path they take. They just don't follow a haphazard course through the lake. They, they all know where they're going all the time, so they have to take their runways. Oh! Yeah. Hey. Yes, we got another one here. Fred's out fishing me, oh, Jeff. I'm hot tonight. So I tell you, when they first hit, they don't feel that big. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Oh, it's another one about the same size. Boy, I'm a believer. Oh, look at it. Hey, hey, that's number two. Fred's, number two. Fred's going to be working on my limit in a while here, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> is that a good sign? That's a good sign when you're catching rock bass out here. You know that the walleyes are biting. When you can't catch rock bass, you might as well go home. I'll tell you, when it shakes its head like that, it worries me. Yeah. Because it feels like it's releasing, you know? Uh huh. As long as you keep that line real tight, we'll get him right in. There he is. You see him? Yep. Good one? No, oh, not particularly, but a good <laughs> fighter. A real good fighter. Oh, not much bigger. What about playing a walleye? These are averaging three, four pounds, five pounds. How, what, what's the secret to playing a walleye? It's uh, get them into the boat as fast as you can and uh, don't give them a break. And, and if you got to stretch your line to the breaking point because you want to keep the hooks buried in their mouth and uh, always keep your hooks sharp as you can possibly get them. Well, your hooks on your lures are incredibly sharp. Sharpest I've ever, ever known. You'd win a hook sharpening contest. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've lost too many walleye when I had dull ones, and I finally decided that keeping the hook sharp is the biggest key to hooking the walleyes consistently and keeping them hooked. Otherwise, they'll throw it. Whoa! This is, yeah, this is, I don't want to lose this one. This is the best fighter so far. Ooh, that is a big one. That is a big fish. Oh, oh, oh! This is nice. Oh, all right. There it is. That's a nice one. There's my pile of walleyes, gang. Oh, look at the size of this one. You're down for the night. Huh? <laughs> that's your limit, Fred? Yeah. Huh? That's his limit. That's it, but look at that. Uh, we got huh? Is that a nice walleye? Is that a nice walleye? We got a guy fishing right off. It's that. it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy it ten times better than daytime fishing because it's you never know what you're really gonna hook and you don't know how big it's gonna be in the daytime. You're kind of limited to what you're going to catch. and uh, You mean smaller fish? Yeah, smaller fish. At night, you know that what you're going to catch is going to be mainly walleyes with a few rock bass thrown in and a couple sheephead now and then. But uh, there's always that chance for that 12-pounder. <laughs> would have predicted that we would have done that well. I mean, Ralph and Jerry, when they left, they said it's a bad night. The weather changed just like that. And folks, don't ever cancel a fishing or hunting trip this fall because of a weather forecast because two factors. The weather is very localized at this time of year. The wind currents, the cold fronts and all that, hey, it can be warm up here and cold down here or vice versa and it can change instantly just like it did for us. So don't cancel a trip or, or plan a trip because of the weather. One thing you can be sure of, the overall pattern at this time of year is, it's getting colder, just like last night. Furnace kicked out of my house the first time. Oh, there goes the heat bill. That's the way it goes, but that is gonna be bringing the ducks down. It's gonna be increasing the activity of the bucks in rut, and it's definitely increasing the fishing success in the inland lakes. You'll see this on our trophy report coming up, some of the recent fish that have been caught. It has also moved the salmon in close to shore. The conditions, although they're turbulent, in fact, talk about turbulence here off Ludington. Real good fishing. Pete Rubianis, who we've been out with a number of times, Pete's boat was hit by lightning last week. Poked a hole in one side of it, blew out all of his electronics. It was at the dock, nobody was hurt. But that's what happens at this time of year, a lot of turbulence. Now, throughout the state, <clears throat> from the bottom right to the top, the fishing conditions are improving. In the UP, they're getting lots of brook trout. The trout fishing is great, but there's so many activities to do. Of course, Bob, one date that we don't have to remind anybody of is November 14th. That's sight-in day that you do right by your deer blind, right? 
That's right. We're going bear hunting September 10th. I will probably sight in September 9th. I know. That's the way it goes. We all remember that. Ed, let's take some letters from our mailbag. All right. From Sterling Heights, Glenn Stochnick writes, Could you please send me the trapping information? Trapping information, we still get a lot of requests for this, and what he's referring to is a feature we had on the show last March, and this was Carl Crofts talking about muskrat and fox trapping. Now, this counter bear trap, when a muskrat swims through it, uh, muskrat will have bought the farm on this one because this yes, kills them. It, it kills them, right. What we're doing is going to place the trap so that the muskrat will swim through there in reaching that artificial den. Now, what if I tripped it myself? Well, it would spring on your hand. Would it hurt me? Not terribly. Could I do it? Surely. Either direction is okay? Yes, either direction. Any direction it'll spring. Oh, that, that doesn't hurt. No, no, no. But the grip holds them, and then they, they do drown very rapidly. Okay, well, here, we'll set this. It's difficult for a lot of people who live in cities to understand about trapping. We had Don Hoyt from president of the National Trappers Association on the show, and he will send to anyone what they call a trapper's truth kit, an array of pamphlets and brochures on trapping explaining from the trapper's point of view what that activity is all about. It's not really a sport. It's an activity gathering fur bearers and send to us, and we'll send you information on trapping. Okay, we have another question from Spring Lake. Kim Nickerson writes, what color Cleo catches the most fish? What do you use to catch the most fish? Oh, two questions, trying to get to my big secrets, huh? Now, I've been carrying my lures, by the way. She's talking about a Cleo lure. Uh, Cleo is uh, this blue and silver, blue and chrome spoon right here. Very popular off the piers at this time of year. It's a heavy spoon, but this coloration, which is the most popular seller and I assume catches the most fish, is good on bright days when the sun is shining and reflecting. If you're fishing on a day that isn't bright, I'd go to one of the painted lures so the fish can see it better underneath the water. What do I use to catch the most fish? Geez, it all depends, but probably live bait. I enjoy using and catching panfish, mm -hmm. uh, catfish, all kinds of things. Can't beat it. And one more question. I have been fishing for the past few weeks, and the pike are only hitting on red and white daredevils. I would like to know why they only hit on this lure, and what else I should try. Well, that's an age-old question. Why they, why daredevils work so well? Because they certainly don't eat them naturally in the water. Uh, the daredevil has an action uh, coloration that seems to attract pike. There I am at Houghton Lake. Uh, aside from a few weeds there, I was able to catch a northern on a daredevil. And right there is the red and white spoon. What this looks like to a fish, I'm not quite sure. Uh, one thing you have to watch, though, when you're buying any type of lures, uh, here's my array of inland lures and daredevils, is check the quality. There are lots of imitations of spoons, things you can buy for 69 cents and so on. Um, the red and white daredevil is made of quality hooks. In fact, look at this one here. This hook is broken off. Uh, you have to watch it. Also, the weight of the stainless steel spoons don't match up to the heavier daredevil spoons. But why this works so well, I can't really explain. And what you should use instead, I don't know why you'd want to use anything else instead. If this is what they're hitting on, I'd stick with it. Maybe go to live bait or a spinner bait. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's take a look at a question here in our outdoor quiz, see if you know the answer. How many U.S. citizens own firearms for hunting, target shooting, or home protection? What do you think it is, 9 million, 22, 40 million? The answer, over 40 million U.S. citizens own firearms for sporting uses. Here are some walleye fillets right here, fresh out of Muskegon Lake. These are some of the smaller ones, Kath. The, okay. the little three and a half and four pounders. But the key ingredients in this recipe, really the walleye fillets, some chopped parsley, fresh parsley, and some garlic. And what are we going to do with them, Kath? Okay, we sauteed a half a cup of butter here. We're going to add the garlic. That's one clove of garlic, crushed okay. or chopped up. Four tablespoons of chopped parsley. Whoa, splattering a little bit. Just makes it smell good in the kitchen. So we're sauteing the chopped parsley and the garlic. Right. That won't take too long right nope. there. In fact, it's ready. I would say so. <laughs> Let's put in our walleye. Now, these are filleted walleye, no bones, probably the most succulent meat you can get. Good white meat. Inland fish. Bring them right in there. A lot of walleye recipes are very simple. And this is no exception. We're not even breading the walleye. We're not deep frying it. We're really sauteing this in the butter. That's not going to take long. That's the main thing in cooking fish, and especially walleye. Don't leave it in the pan until it turns dark, because this will only take a few minutes okay. on each side, and it'll be done. You can see when it turns white around the edges. Now, 
When we're ready to flip this, we just add one more ingredient. And we'll flip them. Do you think you want to flip them now? Yep. They are almost done, believe it mm -hmm. or not. But it's going to have to stay in here a few minutes longer. But we're going to flip this over a little bit earlier, and I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of uh, lemon juice. Looks good. Now we're sort of cheating here using it out of the bottle, but I think it'll be okay. Mm -hmm, I do too. So we have lemon, butter, parsley, garlic. Great combination with fresh walleye. We're going to let that simmer there. Uh, and when we take this out, we're going to saute these almonds. Kind of toast them. Mm -hmm. And put this over the top. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Kathy, while this is cooking, and before we eat it, I want to go to the trophy report. And I'm, I'm the warm-up act for the trophy report. Here's the biggest walleye we well, got the other day. Well, you're sort of. Sort of the warm-up act. A little bit short. I don't quite qualify for Master Angler with this, though. Right. This is five and a half pounds. It was the biggest one that uh, we caught the other night on Muskegon Lake. I think it's a dandy walleye. I do too. Mighty proud of it, but unfortunately, I don't make the trophy report, but some of you folks do. So let's take a look right now at our trophy report. Our leadoff angler this week is a fellow who proves how the fishing improves in September. Dwayne Hiller of Flushing, who last year on September 3rd caught this five pound, 10 ounce smallmouth bass from Houghton Lake. He was using a minnow, probably going for walleye. Houghton Lake, like all inland lakes, is beginning to cool down right now and the fishing will get better and better in the next two months. Lake trout season is closed now in Lakes Michigan and Huron, but the UP is still wide open. And early in August, George Lundquist from Marquette picked up this 26 and a half pound laker trolling with a bucktail fly off Alger County in Lake Superior. You know, Lake Huron has reported some big salmon this season. Less than two weeks ago, this 31 pound king was caught off Iosco County by Mike Wolner from Frankenmuth. That's a nice fish. And here's one that a lot of salmon and walleye diehards might turn their noses up to. They shouldn't, though. Sheep's head fillets boiled for four or five minutes are the best poor man's lobster you can get. They taste just like monkfish. And this is almost 11 pounds of freshwater drum caught on a crawdad tail off Allegan County by Denny Glapa of Alto. Last week, we couldn't produce any channel cats at all during our night on the river, but here's one caught on the night crawler at 1 a.m. It's nine pounds, taken on Mott Lake in Genesee County by Stan Nalgorichuk of Flint. This year, the Master Angler minimum for Northern Pike was lowered to 18 pounds so we can give more anglers a chance, but Ralph Bolt of Marquette didn't need that edge. Fishing Lake Superior off Marquette with a smelt on a bobber in the rain at three in the afternoon, he caught this 25 pound Northern, what a beaut. And our Master Angler of the Week caught what we hope to tie into, a Master Angler walleye. Minimum is nine pounds this year. This one ran nine and a half on a Rebel, trolling just like we were doing. Mott Lake, 10.30 in the morning. Let's congratulate Randy Paz from Clio because he's our Michigan Outdoors Master Angler of the Week. You know, actually, it doesn't look like much when it comes out of the frying pan. It looks all burned and almonds on the top and there's butter, there's lemon there. Do you want some, Ed? I was going to say it looks all good to me. <laughs> but I'm just... Bob, do you want a little piece? You gave him the tail section. That's the you best want a little part. piece that, or a big piece? I'll take, well, that's, that'll do for right now. Kathy, this recipe is so simple. Now, hold it, Ed. It Remember during the trophy report, Ed was saying that he couldn't wait for hunting season to come <laughs> up so we can get off all these fish recipes. Did I say that? You yeah, said that. Now, taste that. All right. So simple. Lemon, butter. Garlic, parsley, and almonds. Mm. Oh, come on, Eddie. <laughs> huh? Did I say that? Yeah. Wait Did, for hunting season. <laughs> well, another delicious recipe. The lemon. Mm. The lemon with the butter. You can hardly go wrong. Mm -hmm. But walleye doesn't need breading. It doesn't need cheese. It doesn't need wine. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's perfect just the way it is. But mm. this, is, this is super because it doesn't add a, a lot of stuff to it. And uh, really great. Something that would be good with... Maybe a little rice, mashed potatoes mm -hmm. on the side. Oh, green beans this time of year. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's walleye, like I said. It's The way you could wreck it is by overcooking it, putting too many ingredients in. Right. Walleye amidine. This is in our last issue of the Club Digest, where we have this. Now, the new issue is going to be coming out. Mm. You know my favorite part about the outdoor calendar? Eating. That's when we get to eat. <laughs> I know. He's talking. And look at Garner's plate. Look at that. Was it Here. good? <laughs> Eddie, why don't you share some of that tail no. section with me? All right, Bob, I'll okay. do that. Oh, hey. this no really is, I, 
this recipe would be hard to overrate oh, it because it, it is so good. Bob, this is walleye. That's what we were fishing for at Muskegon Lake. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. I was fishing for rock bass. Were you? Yeah, I was hoping to catch a walleye incidental to it. What was the score? We got uh, eight fish. Mm -hmm. I got. I two. got my limit. Oh, I got two. Yeah, and I, and I helped Mark reel one mm -hmm. in. Reel one in. Hey, that was a good time, Bob. What can I say? Let's let's drop back for the close of this show, to what we talked about at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> when we hit the dock and poor Bob didn't get any fish. Well, now, here's the smallest walleye that we caught. Bob, will you pick that up to sort of hold that sure. to, to show the size of that? Okay, now, Bob, now, this this is a walleye. This is what we were going after tonight. That's right. Yeah, I, I saw a few of them tonight. Did you? Yeah, That's what I, I thought. Yeah. We thought we'd let you hold some of the fish that Eddie and I caught. Yeah, you're a snake, too, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> We've been out here till 4 in the morning, and poor Bob, what happened? I got a couple of rock bass, so it was a thrilling <laughs> evening. <laughs> Let's go catfish fishing tomorrow night. <laughs> yes. Okay, we did have a great time. Look at the fish we caught. Ed, you and I together caught eight of them. Yeah, I got two. And, uh, well, I got five, and, well, actually, I, uh, Mark, let me reel in. The last one, oh. the, the first one of his, but I got five of them uh -huh. in a row, all on my rod. Hooked them, pulled them in myself. Now, a lot of times you say your clients, uh, you hook them for them and let them pull them in. Yeah, that's unusual. That's the first time that I can think of that uh, that's ever happened. How about that? All I right. got five up on the, all right. on the coach here. All right. But let's look at the two biggest ones. These came out of Muskegon Lake. Ed, pick yours up hey, there. Gladly do that. And here's the biggest one that I caught. This is the Look biggest walleye I've ever caught. Well, this this is my largest, too, right yeah. there. Now, yours, I think, is maybe an inch longer. Mine maybe. might be a little bit heavier. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We'll get those back and get a final score on those uh, sometime tomorrow in the all daylight. Right. But the fish were caught. All five of mine were on this uh, little lure right there that took them all, that deep diver. Yeah. It's what was so hot about this? Why, why did this color, which we only had one color pattern like this, why? It's, uh, it's mainly the action in the lure and hmm. uh, how far it was behind the boat. Now, I let mine go farther than you told me to. And did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I let, I let it go out quite a bit farther. Okay, that's probably part of it, too, there. A little bit different variances uh, get produce more fish mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's not always 50 yards behind the boat sometimes it's 70. now bob is listening very intently and look at bob down here were you listening to this bob yeah and uh i, I picked up a lot of uh, useful information uh, i too uh followed my guide's advice as eddie did and and ed caught fish and i didn't yeah. now do i shoot the guide or ed i don't know what happened to him jeff Oh, I don't know. I think uh, he had he had a couple of hits, and uh, I think he's just having a hard time hooking up with them. Oh. <laughs> Here, Bob. Here, Bob. Here, hold it up. Look, look into the camera and smile, because someday, when you really get good, we're going to have you hold a fish that you caught yourself. <laughs> we are, huh? <laughs>